I have a bit of a challenge for this video, and I'm pretty excited about it. Let's say you have a knife that just fits you right, and you end up using it the most, so therefore it ends up getting worn out the most. It's not exactly in the worst condition, there's no major damage, but it's starting to look a little rough around the edges, no pun intended, and you want to give it that nice new knife shine. With the right equipment and setup, how long would it really take to make this knife look brand new again? That's the question I'm trying to answer in today's video, so I'm giving myself a bit of a challenge. I'm going to throw this timer up here in the corner, and it's going to track every single second that I put into making this knife look new again. Obviously, I'm not going to be counting the time that it takes to set up the camera and record it, because that's kind of just showing the process. But I will be tracking every single second of the process from beginning to end so that y'all can see by the end of the video about how long it takes to refresh a knife like this. So, now that we know what we're trying to do, let's take a closer look at this knife and see what we're working with. This is a simple little K-Bar knife, and it might look a little odd with its proportions and all, but it's actually a really decent little knife. So, let's see what's wrong with it. Undoubtedly, the thing that sticks out the most has got to be how roughed up the blade is. I don't know what someone was trying to cut with it, but it certainly scratched up the blade pretty good, and that's a shame, because this thing actually comes from the factory with a pretty cool little mirror polish. On top of that, it seems the edge has been rolled a bit in a few places, so I need to fix that and give this thing a really nice sharpening. As of right now, I can't get any kind of clean cut on paper, it doesn't even cut through something more rigid like leather, and it certainly isn't sharp enough to shave. Moving on to this stacked leather handle, it looks like it's been scuffed up a bit, but that's a pretty easy fix. The guard has a little bit of corrosion, but that's a simple polish. However, this pommel has a few dents in it that I'm going to have to actually remove some material to smooth out and then polish it up as well. And finally, we have this leather sheath that's actually really good for a factory sheath, but it's been scuffed up pretty bad and it's looking a little dull, so I'll have to give it a little bit of a restoration. Now that we know what we're working with, let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right in and see what we can do with this thing. I'm actually really curious because I've worked on a lot of knives before and I've never held my feet to the fire like this and really timed myself so I don't know if it's going to take 10, 20 minutes or maybe 2 or 3 hours. So this is either going to be a quick little short video or it's going to be a really long boring one but let's find out. So I'm going to start this timer as soon as I touch the knife there and all I'm doing right here is just clamping it into position so that it's nice and steady so that I can work the edge a little bit. And side note, I pause the timer anytime I'm done with a step. All I'm going to do is take this sandpaper, this leather, and this file and stack them all together. What that does is it gives the sandpaper a flexible backing so that it will conform to whatever angle the blade already has. Because all we want to do for now is get rid of a little bit of material, doing away with that little bit of curling that was going on, and making the edge nice and consistent for sharpening on the buffing wheel later. So now that I've worked both sides of the edge, you can see that they're nice and consistent, which is exactly what we were going for, so I'm going to move on to the handle. Once again, all I'm doing here is kind of preparing things for the buffing wheel later. In this case, the handle is leather, so all I want to do is sand down those scuffs that are in it and make it easier for the buffing wheel to kind of polish everything and smooth it over later. Thank you. 
When I went to work on the other side, it was already in pretty good shape, so to save time, I went ahead and let that slide because I knew the buffing wheel could take care of it on its own. Speaking of buffing wheels, it was time to move outside, specifically to this rough buffing wheel, so I could take care of the dents and the pommel. This didn't take very long because the pommel is just soft aluminum, so all I had to do is be careful, make sure that I maintain the original lines, and remove a little bit of material, just enough to get rid of those pesky little dents and make everything look like it did originally. As you can see, once I was finished fixing those dents, I went ahead and made everything consistent on the rest of the pommel so that everything would be easier for the next step, which was polishing. With everything looking nice and consistent, we've got a good base, so let's go ahead and start that polishing process. This buffing wheel is a lot smoother, so I apply some polishing compound to it and go to work on the pommel. All I have to do here is be smooth and consistent, make sure that I cool off the pommel from time to time when it gets hot, and this process removes all the big scratches from the rough buffing wheel. It might seem like a long process when watching this video, but it was only about a minute and 26 seconds in real time, and after that, I was ready to move on to working on the finger guard. This finger guard was a little bit more tricky because I had to make sure that I didn't rub the handle too much with this specific buffing wheel and compound, and I also didn't want to get to the blade just yet. So I had to be careful, make sure I had my angles correct, and make sure I was hitting every single little spot on this tiny little finger guard, getting rid of all the corrosion and making it nice and polished. Despite it being a little more tricky than the pommel, this finger guard ended up taking about the same amount of time, right at about a minute and 30 seconds. So, in total, it only ended up taking about 3 minutes to put the base polish on this pommel and guard, and they're both looking pretty good, so let's move on to the blade. I'm going to continue using the same wheel from before, but I apply some fresh compound. Now, you might notice that I'm holding the blade as vertically as I can, and that's to try to get rid of the horizontal scratches. For the most part, you want the buffing wheel to be moving cross-directionally to whatever big scratches you're trying to remove, but to keep the polish consistent, you're going to have to hold it horizontally sometimes, so what you have to do is be a little careful and keep those transitions smoothly, starting horizontally, working your way to vertically, or vice versa.
Now, another thing you might notice is that I'm actually not wearing gloves, and some people might think that that's a safety hazard, but it's actually the opposite. If you have extra material that you cannot feel, it could get caught up in the buffing wheel, causing even bigger safety hazards whenever everything gets wrapped up together. So, I don't wear gloves for that reason, but there's also another reason. I need to be able to feel the temperature of the blade. If the blade gets too hot during the buffing process, then it can actually ruin whatever heat treat the knife has. So, as you can see, I keep reaching off screen to dip the blade in a little bucket of water to keep it nice and cool. After only a little less than two minutes, you can already see some big improvements on the blade with the majority of the scratches having gone away, but there's still a few of these deeper little nicks in the blade, so it's back to the buffing wheel for some more work. Once again, you can see that I'm holding the blade vertically and focusing specifically on that area near the tip where the deeper scratches are. There's no need to remove any more material than we really need to. Now that I have the big scratches removed from this side, I'm just going to flip over the blade and focus on the other side, doing pretty much the same thing. So, after a little bit more time, you can see that I've managed to remove those deeper scratches, but now we have the issue that the blade isn't consistent from one end to the other because you can see where I've been focusing more efforts with the buffing wheel. All I have to do about this is simply go back to the buffing wheel and make a few passes that cover the whole blade, and that'll smooth everything over. As you can see here, what I do is I start horizontally and then gradually drag vertically towards the tip, which kind of makes that crossfade so that everything's even from one end to the other.
So now, after only about five to six minutes of total work, I've actually gotten both sides of the blade fully rough polished, but before we make things look super polished, it's time to focus on the edge of this blade and make it nice and sharp. For this part of the process, I'm going to move away from the softer buffing compound and move towards this much denser specific sharpening compound. So I apply a little bit of that sharpening compound to the buffing wheel and here we go. My particular sharpening process is generally pretty simple. I start doing what you're seeing me do right now where I take one side at a time and I work it back and forth with quite heavy pressure to make sure that everything is consistent from one end to the other. Once I'm satisfied that both sides of the edge are consistent, now I'm going to focus on the sharpening aspect. So I apply a little bit more knife sharpening compound to the buffing wheel, and I start working the blade back and forth just one swipe per side using consistent pressure and consistent angle. This process is more about honing the material than removing the material. So by working it back and forth like this, I am actually slowly dragging the little metal particles to a very, very fine edge and it will be incredibly sharp afterwards. But given that I'm working with wax compound on a cloth wheel and barely any grit involved, this process obviously takes quite a bit longer. Something I do to stay consistent is I count out these strokes. So I'll do 30 per side or 30 in total, or 60 per side or 60 in total. You get the general idea. In this case, you can see that the knife is definitely starting to get sharp, but it still catches a little bit during the shave test. So it's time to go back for another round.
The main reason that I count off these strokes is to keep track of where I'm at in the sharpening process. So, if I use 30 strokes the first time and I see barely any improvement, well then I'll probably use 60 strokes the next time. But, on the other side, if I use 30 strokes and I see quite a bit of improvement, then I might only use 15 strokes the next time. So, it kind of helps me gauge where I'm at, depending on how much progress I see after every little session. In this case, it took me two rounds and just under six minutes to give this thing a really sharp edge. So, it's time now to move on to the final polishing process. For this, it's time to move over our buffing wheel from this general purpose buffing wheel to a softer, smoother buffing wheel and apply some fresh compound to it that's specifically meant for polishing with barely any grit in it at all. The polishing process is pretty much exactly the same as the buffing process, only we're using a softer compound, a softer wheel, and we're using less pressure to make sure that we're just very gently smoothing out the surface of the handle, the blade, everything in between. When it comes time to polish the blade, I have to be a little careful that I don't press the edge too hard against the buffing wheel. This polishing wheel and compound probably won't be able to affect the edge regardless, but I'm still careful because I got a really sharp edge earlier, and if I dulled it in any way, I would have to shift back to that sharpening compound, which is rougher than the polishing compound, so it could risk messing up the polish that I'm doing now. The final polishing process might seem to take the longest, but in terms of how much area we're covering, it's actually the fastest. In less than 4 minutes, we're covering the entire blade, pommel, guard, handle, everything about this knife to give it its nice final polish, and with the knife taken care of, we can move on to the final thing to deal with, the sheath. 
There isn't really a whole lot that this sheath needs other than to take care of these bigger scratches, so to do that, as well as just refreshing the sheath in general, I'm going to take some tan leather dye, dab it on this microfiber towel, and I'm going to rub it over the sheath, just kind of buffing it in, which will give it a nice fresh sheen to it, as well as really blending in those scratches and making them sink down to the point where they're barely even recognizable. Just like that, in barely over 30 seconds, the scratches have been blended in and you can really only see them if you kind of hold the sheath at just the right angle. So that's good enough for that part. Now it's time to move on to the rest of the sheath and make it look just as good. Well, there you have it, 21 minutes and 47 seconds. Not half bad, but before we get too excited, let's go ahead and take a look at the final results to see if that time was well spent. First of all, I'd say the primary goal was more than met, with the scratches being removed from the surface of the blade, making it look 10 times better. And while it's not the best mirror polish I've ever done, it's still certainly passable, especially given the little bit of time that I spent on it. Moving on to the sharpening of the edge, I would say that was also a huge success because I was able to get rid of the little bit of rolling that was happening on the end and even everything out and give it a nice smooth apple seed edge that will cut through anything like butter. Now when it comes to the handle, there's not really much to say. There wasn't a whole lot to do there other than just some simple buffing, but I was able to remove those rough patches from the leather, those dents came right off the pommel and it polished up real nicely, and the corrosion came off the guard without too much of a fight. So overall, I think this knife cleaned up real nicely and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now aside from the knife stuff, in full transparency, I ended up spending about 50 hours working on this video, whereas it only took 21 minutes and 47 seconds for the knife itself. You see, that nifty little idea to use the timer and keep everything tracked in real time as closely as possible ended up being a little bit more difficult than I had bargained for. I am by no means an expert on coding, I only know the very basics, but my older brother is pretty much a genius at it, and ChatGPT is good at writing basic scripts, so we pooled our combined knowledge and experience and we made this script that would run this timer at the specific timestamps so that it would be matched up in real time. Again, it might not look like a whole lot, and it probably wasn't worth the effort, honestly, but I had a lot of fun trying to troubleshoot that, so I'm thinking of different ways that I might be able to incorporate something like that into my videos in the future to make it more engaging and realistic. Because after all, sometimes working on these projects takes a really long time, and sometimes it doesn't take as much as people might think, and if people knew just how easy some of this stuff was, they might be able to try it themselves. So if I can help motivate or inspire or anything like that, I'm always willing to try. But this video has been long enough as it is, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up, get off my little soapbox here, and if you liked it, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like it, hit the subscribe button, and any other questions, comments, concerns, video ideas, put them in the description down below. That's about it. Until next time, stay happy, healthy, wealthy, and wise. I'll catch you later. Peace out. This is the longest video I've made to date, and I suck at outros. <laughs>